You're listening to Living with Louie. Well, hi, folks, and um, I'd like to uh, take uh, and spend some time on this edition talking about uh, life uh, after your diagnosis. And I can tell you that uh, when I know, and I've said this before, that when I was first diagnosed, uh, there weren't too many things that I found um, that um, were positive and that were, were going to be encouraging. Um, however, um, I did put uh, forward to uh, <laughs> to some of the folks that are on my Living with Louis uh, um, podcast group. I asked uh, some of them um, what subjects they'd like to hear about, and one of the things that came up was what has helped me the most. What's helped me the most? Well, for me, um, it starts with. Uh, a, the absolute um, unconditional love and support that my wife gives to me. And without that, I don't know where I would be. But uh, one of my neurologists suggested to me that I start into physical therapy. Well, my experience with physical therapy up to this point was not really that favorable because you would go to an inpatient place and they'd say, okay. And they teach you a couple of exercises that they thought would help you. Um, and this is prior to my Louis body. So, um, at any rate, uh, the, you'd go there and they would teach you how to do your exercise on your first visit. Come second visit, you'd walk in, they go, okay, go on over there and do your exercises. And when you there's nobody there that's checking to make sure that your form is correct, nobody there to make sure that you're doing it correctly at all. Uh, uh, you look, and they're all on their telephones uh, or their cell phones, and they're uh, chatting and giggling and doing everything except for, in my opinion, providing you with quality physical therapy. So I had a really sour taste in my mouth about uh, participating in uh, physical therapy. But my neurologist uh, and my wife said, look, what we're going to provide for, for you is uh, in-home services, and it's, uh, it's totally different. And so with some coaching or coaxing, I should say, excuse me, from my wife, I, I agreed. Well, little did I know that I was going to end up meeting the people who have uh, absolutely made the biggest difference for me. I have a team of therapists that come in they um, I will start with one is a occupational therapist uh, she has made sure that my home is as safe as it can possibly be she's not only helped me to make some changes here in my home uh, so that I can maintain my independence right now. But she has also given me um, I ideas and resources of things that I may need or where I can get them in the future. Um, as, as this progresses and potentially I'm going to need more assistance um, to stay in my home. And uh, I, I saw a question on Facebook. Uh, is it possible to take care of your loved one? And my answer to that was, Lord, I hope so, because I certainly love my wife and I love the life I have with my wife. And so I really want to make, I want to stay in my home as long as I can. But they, um, some of the things that they um, have helped me with 
which I would have never, uh, I didn't even know they made elastic shoelaces. I was having a great deal of difficulty reaching my feet in order to tie my shoes. And my occupational therapist went, huh, okay. Next time she came, she says, here, why don't we try these? They're elastic shoelaces. So I don't have to tie my shoes. I can stretch the tongue forward and I can manage to get my shoes on now with the help of a longer shoehorn. Um, but it made that, that task that was frustrating so much simpler. Um, there's a, a hook that she got me for helping me to get my socks like on and off. Um, we've gone to, uh, grab bars in the bathroom, grab bars in the shower so that if I'm a little less, uh, steady, I have something that I can reach for. Um, and one of the things that she's told me is that in the future, I may have to consider a shower chair and she's showing me a number of different options that are available, uh, in that, uh, she has uh, gone through watching me uh, cook and make sure that I'm capable of, uh, of fixing myself something to eat. She's just watched uh, and, and observed um, just about uh, everything you can think of and has done everything to try to make that um, easier for me. She makes suggestions constantly on uh, how things can be better. And not only does she do the occupational therapy, but she also does uh, physical therapy with me as well. Um, so that's uh, one member of the team. Another member of the team who has also been a guest on this podcast is my speech therapist. And if you had, were listening to, to, to me speak um, eight, six, eight months ago, you could barely understand me. And uh, now um, she has given me strategies to help me cope with the things that are happening that affect my speech. Like when my brain has a thought that my mouth doesn't want to produce, don't try to force it. Take a minute, take a second, think about it, let it clear up, uh, and then go ahead and spit it out. So, at times, my speech now is perhaps a little choppy, but it, you can certainly understand um, a whole lot better what it is that I'm saying. It is, it's, it's amazing to me uh, the difference in, in my speech. So that's the two of my therapists. Then I have a physical therapist who also happens to hold a specialty in neurological physical therapy. And she has been absolutely amazing. And I will tell you that this whole... Um, the, the, the whole group of them um, has been just the biggest help to me. But one of the things that um, I have learned with the physical therapist that specializes with, this, with neurological disorders, um, she is uh, trying exercises with me that not, weren't necessarily um, worked with, with it, and at least not to, to my knowledge or her knowledge with patients with Lewy body, but they, they, they call them these large movement exercises 
And I mean, they're right there. They want to make sure that I'm safe and I'm not going to going to fall or anything like that. But they have challenged my balance in a way that has increased my ability to be aware of my own uh, balance and my my walking. Um, I know that at times I still try to want to walk out on my toes, which is a place where you're going to be moving more forward and you're more prone to falls. Um, so they talk, teach me, put your heel down. And I've talked about that, I think, in previous episodes. And uh, then there's my my social worker um, and my my uh, my counselor, and she she knows that I was in a very very dark place, and actually um, she thought I was high risk for suicide when she first met. And she has helped me through what is the grieving process, which is what we go through um, when we're initially diagnosed, and helped me to find my way through that. And during this time, uh, I don't know exactly where it came from, but um, someone, uh, I'm not sure, the thought of having a podcast to try to help others uh, that have Lewy body or have been diagnosed with Lewy body or their caregivers. But um, starting this podcast has given me a purpose. It gives me something to work on, which exercises my brain. Um, And so as I start putting my thought process together to put an episode together, uh, it certainly helps with um, keeping my brain uh, as as sharp as we can. I mean, um, and so... It's been with finding some purpose and and understanding that, yeah, um, I have some limitations. Now, you can either let these limitations define you or you can accept them and work with them. And that's what I've chosen to do. I've chosen to do the best I can working within my limitations. She's helped me to understand the, uh, so that some of my frustrations don't necessarily need to be as uh, big of an issue as what I initially maybe think they are. She's um, talked me into uh, writing them down, and then hopefully then I don't, uh, back up the dump truck and dump the day's worth of frustration and agitation uh, out on my wife when she walks in the door because she does not deserve that. But sometimes that's the only person that you see. So, um, but when I'm asked what helped me the most, I can, I can stay with uh, with absolute certainty that it's my therapy team that has absolutely been the biggest impact and has absolutely helped me the most to uh, push myself and uh, and try to find ways to 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 work within my limitations and whatnot it's uh without them i have i i don't even want to think about where i would be now i will tell you that they have excellent communication skills amongst them they um 
one of them may come see me today and say, hmm, um, you, you seem a little off today. And so if I seem a little off, they'll ask, you know, questions to try to figure out if there's something specific that they can do. Uh, or they maybe lighten the load that day. They do whatever they can to try to work around that circumstance. And um, they'll communicate what their findings are with one another. And uh, it's funny because one will one's here one day and one comes the next. And when the one comes in the next day, they're like, oh, so how are things going? I said, I'm like, yeah, like you don't already know. I know that you guys communicate. But I'll tell you, some of the feedback that they've given to me, um, and I think this is important, and I kind of hit on this in an episode I did on mental attitude, is that one of the things that they, they tell me is, A, I'm one of the younger people that they've ever seen with Louis Body. I'm also at potentially a earlier stage of the disease. Um, no one knows that for certain, um, but um, they... Uh, they also know that even if I don't feel like I, I want to get up and do my exercises that day, I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up. I'm going to get moving. And by gosh, when they get here, I'm going to give it 110% because I know that, that they have helped me so much. And I know that, that, this is a necessary thing for me in order to be able to uh, have some quality of life. They're giving me back some of the quality of life, if you will. So in answering someone's question about what has helped me the most, it's the love and support of my wife and my family. And certainly the therapy team that comes in and takes uh, and, and helps me get through whatever battles I have to, to face. And I just, uh, it, it has totally turned my thought pattern around on uh, physical therapy for certain. And I know that one of the people that I've interviewed here on the show, uh, they... Um, he tells me that he had uh, he had the, a goal where he wants to go on a cruise and go to a, a ball game, and he's actually got uh, gotten the attention attention of a, his favorite team, and so he's going to be attending a ball game, and the next then then the next day he leaves on his cruise, and he he told me that he he was going to physical therapy and and with his goal being that that's where I, I want to do i want to fulfill this this um this goal that i have of going to this ball game and, and going on this cruise and he had this substantial improvement in i think it was 6 weeks uh in his endurance and his strength because he committed to the program that they were trying to work with him and made a commitment because he wanted to fulfill these things that are important in his life. And so I honestly believe that, that getting up and facing the day and working out the stiffness a little bit and uh, get up and get moving. Those are things that, uh, that I've always believed in, but I believe in them more now than I ever have. And I will tell you that those things, the, the therapy team that taught me had been absolutely instrumental 
in uh, in me getting back some quality of life. There is life after your diagnosis. I think that you have to understand that things are not going to necessarily go exactly like they used to, but by gosh, you can still get through them. Um, I put a, uh, a new convertible top on, a, on my wife's little roadster over the winter. It took me all winter. I took pictures of everything that I was working on so that I didn't have to rely on my memory as to where does this go, where does that go. I could look back. I, I learned a long time ago when you're taking something apart to tag and bag everything. And, and so I was very careful with each step to know that perhaps in the next step I might not remember. So I may have to look back. So am I making accurate uh, notes and pictures and making sure that I know that where this is all going to go back together? Well, by gosh, it took me all winter. But I got it done. And so I think that you have to pick the timing, understand it may take longer, and that you also may have to um, take some necessary steps to help you to remember how things are going to go when you try to go to completing the project. So those are the things that I have found that have absolutely helped me the most. Uh, and another thing that, uh, that one of the uh, people on the group asked about was uh, places where you can find um, resources for uh, physicians and, um, and research studies and whatnot. And I would tell you that the Lewy Body Dementia Association has a, um, a ton of that information out there. They have on their resource page uh, federal government resources uh, for the National Institute on Aging, they have general information, of course, available through the Louis Body Dementia Association. Um, and there's also the uh, Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research. There's uh, a section here on support services for uh, elder care locators uh, and... Um, there's a Family Caregiver Alliance. Uh, the alliance uh, provides information and referral education and other services to caregivers of people. Uh, so uh, another great resource. And this is all on the Louis Body Dementia Association's website. Uh, there's a section in here for children and teens and section for diagnosis, treatment, and research. Um, the, so that would be a good starting point. I hope I've answered the things that uh, folks wanted to hear on this uh, particular uh, episode. Please remember, folks, that we are 100% voluntarily uh, funded by our listeners. So please go to the link and at the bottom of your, uh, of your favorite podcast uh, provider, and you'll find a link there that says uh, support the show. Or you can find us on uh, GoFundMe under Living with Louie Podcast. Um, and every dollar counts uh, and every dollar helps. So please uh, take a minute and uh, go in and, uh, and support the show. We, we certainly would appreciate it. Uh, the only thing we try to do is cover our operating costs and equipment maintenance costs. So uh, we thank you. And... Have a great day. We'd like to thank you for joining us for this edition of Living with Louie. 